My name is Patty and I'm an alcoholic addict. My first taste of alcohol was I can remember pieces of a toddler, which sometimes I say pieces of because it's, sometimes I don't realize that it's me, uh, running around uh, taking sips off of everybody's beer. My parents used to have tattoo parties and, and you know, uh, weekend parties, and they lasted all weekend. And so growing up, I thought this was normal. Little did I know later that this was <laughs> alcoholic and drug behavior. When we were, when us kids were sick, our medicine that my mother gave us was uh, hot toddies. So it was also alcoholic, alcohol-induced medication, not store-bought. So I started out as a young child into the addiction. And for me, this was very normal. Um, so as I grew older, and all the violence, and, and there was <clears throat> molestation in my, in, my, uh, in my story, and a lot of beatings and violence and uh, police involved, um, I swore to myself that I was not going to be like these people. Even though I was raised in this, I didn't feel like I, I fit into this. There was so much chaos. Uh, when, when I was eight years old, my father had stolen me and my brother and put us underground for two years. So I had lost two years of education. Being at fourth and fifth grade, that is like the most important piece of a person's education. When, when my mom had had uh, the detectives find us and brought us back, I was, um, I was two years behind. So when they put me back into school, they put me back into school uh, as my age bracket instead of my educational level. So I struggled. I struggled big time. And because she had been into alcohol and drugs herself, she couldn't be a very good advocate for, for me growing up to, to support me and be there for me. So I ended up dropping out of school at eight, at, in eighth grade. I was in and out of foster homes my whole life. My mom would um, take us to foster care when she knew that she couldn't take, us, take care of us that, for that month. And so she would drop us off. And then a month later, she would come pick us up and she would have her, her act together. And so CPS would let her do this. So this would go on for years, a few years, you know. And um, as long as she was trying to make, make things right, that's, that's what they saw. Her ex-fiance had molested me and I had to deal with that. And in turn, she hated me for that. Our relationship was very estranged. I swore to myself I was never going to be this type of mom. I was never going to treat my children this way and that I just needed to find a different route. Well, I didn't know how to get out of the, situ the life I was living because um, I was raised in it. So, yeah, I would just, I, being a runaway, doing what I could to take care of myself and as a teenager that, that in, in tune being with, with older guys so I had a place to stay. I was with uh, a man that was 14 years older than I was at the age of 14 until I turned 18 because I had nowhere else to go. Nobody else was there for me. So I had to do what I had to do to survive. Gratitude was very difficult to, to grasp when you're in this miserable life set that has been handed to you and you really don't know how to get out of it or deal with it. My first husband at 19 was in and out of prison where I'm married to a man that was never around and I'm trying to raise this child by myself. The first part of my recovery was when we first got together and he was absconded, we got him back in with the parole department but we had to get clean so he could stay out of prison. Well, we were clean and sober for two years. We did the NA thing, the whole Narcotics Anonymous. We went to Palm Springs on a recovery retreat, which was freaking amazing, even just to remember that way back when. There was five of us in the back of a truck and four in the cab, and we were just under blankets just so we could get there. I mean, you go to any lengths in your addiction, you should go to any lengths in your recovery. So we did that. He ended up going back to prison. When he got out, we moved to Utah. The marriage ended there. I ended up with another gentleman that I have a daughter from. That was a nightmare in itself. The best part of, of that relationship, I got my daughter out of that, which in turn, my first husband went ahead and he took a parental ship over her. Um, so he helped raise her, because we ended up got back together. <laughs> what do you do? You go, back, you go backwards. We ended up both relapsing and getting back into uh, trouble, and he ended up taking the rap for everything. He did three years in San Quentin and I did 18 months of a outpatient rehab. The case manager that showed up on the scene when they took my daughter, because she was in the car with us when we got arrested, my middle daughter, she was there at the end of, ev of everything. And her question to me was, how did you beat the system? And I was kind of mortified because at this point, the only thing, my only focus wasn't even my addiction, it was my, of getting my kids back. 
you know, so my, my first time into recovery was, you took my kids, they're mine, I want them back, this is what I'm gonna do to do it, to get them back. I stayed sober for seven years, and for that first 18 months that I was clean, I had met my husband. My first husband was still in prison, and um, we just went our separate ways because I just knew that I needed a better life for me and my girls, and I didn't want to use anymore, and Jay didn't use, and for the first time I could see the, end, the light at the end of the tunnel out of my whole life. We got married, I got pregnant, we had Jada. Five years-ish, he wanted to socially drink. And I kept telling him, I can't socially drink because that's my gateway. A lot of people have pot as gateway, a lot of people have other substances as gateway, mine's alcohol. If I start drinking, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go start slamming dope again and I don't wanna do that. We had bought in a house, we got a car, we had all five of our kids together uh, during the summertime. Life was really good. I was now a, a functioning mother. Um, we, we had a good family going and so my addiction told me, my brain, my mindset told me, you can drink, it's okay. You know, and, and, and I trusted his words. And I had said to him, if I drink, you're not gonna like me. We're gonna end up in a divorce. And he was like, he, he reassured me, no, I can help manage this, it'll be okay. Um, I love you, that's stronger than anything. For the first four or five years, I can actually say that he did pretty well managing it. You know, we would only do it socially when we would go drinking with friends. Uh, we would go <clears throat> out to dinner, we'd have a glass of wine or, you know, a couple shots, it didn't matter, and then, you know, it, it, it would calm it down. About the last two years, three years of my addiction, um, I was hiding it. I was filling bottles up with water, putting it in the freezer, so he wouldn't notice that I had been drinking during the day while he was gone uh, at work. When I started a 12 to 12 shift at work, I was drinking before I'd go into work. I drank every night. I had I had bottles hidden in my closet. Vodka was my was my alcohol. You know, um, at the end of it, we had went down the river, and my daughter was with us. I, I rely on blackouts because blackouts I didn't have to remember anything. It was like I would wake up and and I'd be going, okay, what had happened? What did I do wrong? And then, but it was okay because I couldn't remember it, so it was like it didn't really happen. We had been drinking wine and vodka, and um, I couldn't black out. It was, it was crazy, it was like I couldn't, I couldn't drink enough to get drunk to black out. She had squirted me with a water bottle, with a water gun on the, on the river, going down the river, and I got pissed off at my 13-year-old daughter for doing that. I got pissed off because she was trying to have fun, and my, I was in a mindset of, of drinking and drugging and whatever, and I wasn't nice to her. And it reminded me of the way my mom was to me. My girlfriend had called me that we were in, going down the river with, and she had said, uh, why don't you come over and have some coffee? And I knew, I just knew she wanted to talk about this, this particular day. And I wasn't, I wasn't ready, so I kept pushing it off, pushing it off, and then finally went over there. I walked back into the meetings of AA. I knew I needed a better life. I knew I needed to, to change it. I knew I needed to do this for myself where I was gonna lose everything. 18 months into my recovery this time is when my recovery really took off because I had lost everything. I had lost my husband. I lost my daughter. I lost the stability of what I had had for 15 years. My mom had died October 2014. Um, my daughter was in the hospital for cutting and he had asked for a divorce. And at 18 months sober, I said, you better mean it because I'm walking out the door. And I walked. And I walked because I needed something different. I needed, I needed judgment different. I needed, I needed me to be different. I needed life to be different. I needed, I needed to feel like my whole life wasn't a waste anymore and that I had like jumped down the rabbit hole. And I just spiraled. Even though I was 18 months sober, I still felt like I was spir spiraling. When I was free of the judgment and was free of the shame and was free of the guilt, my recovery, the, the promises of this program took off. It took off for me and um, I was able to finally feel free inside because my whole life I've had to worry about taking care of other people. I had to worry about um, taking care of the, the husband, the kids, this, and for the first time in my recovery, I get to be selfish and take care of me in my recovery take care of me and my sobriety, take care of me in the sense that 
I don't have to worry about the marriage. I don't have to worry about the kids. I don't have to worry about um, who's drinking and who's not drinking, who's drugging and who's not drugging, because I'm not in that situation anymore. I had to do things for myself. You know, I, um, I created an RV vehicle for the vehicle that I wanted. I was living in a one bedroom apartment with my daughter part time, and um, I bought a two bedroom house that I thought I would never own, that I would never master on my own. That's why I'm being married three times. I thought I always had to have that third income or that second, third income. I've done it. I've done that on my own. I can look in the mirror today and say that I am, I have grown into the woman that, that God wants me to be. It doesn't matter what my past is. I am who I am today because of my past. I have friends in the program that care about me and it's genuine. It's not, they don't want anything from me except for me to be clean, sober, and happy. And with sobriety, you get to be happy. That breed of animal back there is something that I've always feared my whole life. And being into drugs and alcohol, that's one thing that I ran, I, that I ran from was the fear of everything. And so when I got divorced, I went and I got a pit bull so I could learn how to face my fears. And he's been the best part of my sobriety. I don't have to fear anything today. And I have to say the past 18 months of my three years has been exceptionally happy, joyous, and free. If you're out there suffering from your addiction, there's, there's meetings that you can go into. There's places that, that want you to come and, and join them and be a part of and let them love you till you can love yourself because they will. I have a whole life to continue to live. I, I want to travel some more. I, did, I went on my very first vacation, seven day cruise in recovery. Uh, I went and got my passport right after I got a divorce. It was the first thing I got. I want to do uh, meetings in other countries. You know, I want to be able to spread the, the word of recovery to other, other people, you know, because it's, you don't have to be in misery your whole life. There is an easier, softer way. You know, I, I, I can't always do it one-on-one, -on -one, but if I could do it for just one, that's amazing to me.